good afternoon and welcome to another episode of the Silver Linings Librarian. I'm Miss Coviello and I'm here in the Lower Ninth Ward of New Orleans, Louisiana, where some pretty bad things happened about 16 years ago. And I hope that this story will inspire you and make you think and make you want to learn more about what happened during Hurricane Katrina. I'm going to have some ideas for parents about how you can turn this story into a research project for your kids and also some thoughts about what are the life lessons of Katrina, which I lived through, that can help us all right now. So this is The Two Bobbies, A True Story of Hurricane Katrina, Friendship and Survival by Kirby Larson and Mary Nethery and illustrated by John Cassells. Some really beautiful end pictures. These are called end pages. The Two Bobbies. The city of New Orleans on the mighty Mississippi is a place that many pets and people call home. Jamming with jazz and dressing up fancy for Mardi Gras, it bustled with life night and day. But on August 29, 2005, Hurricane Katrina bore down on the city and everyone who lived there, including a wisp of a cat and one puppy dog. Winds roared to 110 miles an hour. Rain pounded hard and fast. Strong winds pushed walls of water from the Gulf of Mexico into Lake Pontchartrain. And some of the levees, so you can see them there. Can we film the levees? Can we show them what a levee is? You got it? Okay. Um, the levees that held up the water gave way. Water poured into the city deeper and deeper. People who stayed home through the storm were finally forced to leave. They had to say goodbye to everything they loved. Many were told they could not take their pets. Bobby and Bobcat were left behind. Bobby had been tethered with a length of chain. Bobcat stayed by her side. Together, in the silent heat, they waited for help to come. After the storm, volunteers from across the country came to New Orleans to lend a hand. They brought food and water, they rescued people stranded on the roofs of their homes, and they rescued many animals. But with so much damage and confusion, the two Bobbies were not rescued. Their food and water gone, Bobby finally broke free. She dragged along the broken chain with Bobcat close behind her. In the early days after the hurricane, the two Bobbies tried to make their way around oily water littered with debris. After the waters receded, they traveled the buckled streets with no place to call home. Month after month passed as Bobby and Bobcat wandered the devastated city. Their days and nights were filled with danger. Packs of hungry homeless dogs roamed the streets, fighting smaller animals for food. Were Bobby and Bobcat chased away from any scraps they might have found? Little food to eat or clean water to drink, Bobby's ribs began to show. Bobcat's brown sugar markings started to fade to a dull white. One day in January, four long months after the, after the hurricane, Bobby and Bobcat strayed onto a job site. A construction crew hammered and sawed, fixing up a motel damaged by the hurricane. A worker's dog rushed over to play with Bobby. Dog's owner, Rich, noticed Bobcat too. He saw how thin the two strays were and began feeding them. He trimmed Bobby's chain, leaving enough to jingle on the ground because Bobcat liked to follow it. Every time Rich tried to touch Bobcat, Bobby growled. After a week of caring for the two Bobbies, Rich got some bad news when his boss came to the job site. He had given, given permission for one dog, but not two dogs and a cat. He said Bobby and Bobcat had to go. Rich was determined to take them to a safe place, but Bobby still growled whenever Rich got too near Bobcat. She would not let him pick up or even touch her friend. So Rich rattled a bowl full of kibble. Bobby followed the food to Rich's van and Bobby, Bobcat followed Bobby. Rich drove them to a temporary shelter that Best Friends Animal Society had set up in Celebration Station, a former video game arcade. 
shelter was completely filled with homeless dogs and cats, but a volunteer welcomed them in, even naming them Bobby and Bobcat for their bob tails. They were placed in separate rooms. All night long, Bobby howled and barked. Bobcat paced back and forth. No one could sleep with Bobby making such a ruckus. So volunteers made a large pen for her and put Bobcat in her small carrier inside Bobby's new cage. Bobby lay in front of Bobcat and whimpered. The volunteers opened the small cage to see what would happen. The two Bobbies touched noses. They were together again. For the next few minutes, the volunteers studied Bobby and Bobcat. They noticed how Bobcat stayed close to Bobby. They saw how he walked with his neck stuck out and how he carefully lifted one front paw, placing one down at a time, as if he were unsure of what he might step on. Someone waved a hand in front of Bobcat's face. Bobcat did not jump back. Another volunteer waved her hand. Bobcat did not even blink. Everyone was stunned. Bobcat was blind. All that time on their own, Bobby had been Bobcat's seeing eye dog. Volunteers and even an ace pet detective searched for their family. No success. One month later, Celebration Station closed its doors, but Bobby and Bobcat still did not have a home. There was only one thing left to try. The two Bobbies made a television appearance on CNN Anderson Cooper 360. The very next day, the Best Friends volunteers left New Orleans. One of them drove Bobby and Bobcat to the Best Friends Animal Sanctuary in Utah, where they would stay with a new family until a new family could be found. They were on their way west when the news came in. Hundreds of people had offered to adopt them. It would take a very special family to adopt them together. The volunteers made a list and invited everyone on it to come and meet the two Bobbies. Only Melinda and her Boston Terrier Gus Gus made the long trip to Utah. That night, Bobby and Bobcat had a sleepover with Melinda and Gus Gus in one of the cottages on the sanctuary grounds. Would the two Bobbies choose Melinda? They live with Melinda and Gus Gus and Amelia on a ranch in Southern Oregon. Bobcat has a window seat to sit in. He likes to play with the robot vacuum cleaner. He turns it all by, it turns it on all by himself. Bobby helps with the ranch chores. She goes along on horse rides. On hot days, she lounges in the frog and fairy pond. At the end of every day, Bobby and Bobcat snuggle up together. They have toys and treats and lots of new friends, even a camel. Best of all, they have each other. And that's a true story. As you can see, that's the real dog and the real cat that really did happen in New Orleans. Bobby and Bobcat survived Hurricane Katrina and they did it by lending each other a paw. So for moms and dads out there, if you're looking for a way to build on this story, um, one of the great things that you could do would definitely be do research on animals in Hurricane Katrina because it's a great way for kids to understand what happened. There's a great natural, nat nature special from PBS about rescuing the animals out of the storm and it includes our zoo rescues and our aquarium rescues. So I really recommend that movie. You can find a link to it on YouTube or on PBS. I also really think that it's a great, um, kids love learning about disability. So learning about um, seeing eye dogs is really fascinating and Helen Keller's life story is always a perennial favorite and that's another branch you could go off into about um, sign language and um, uh, dog seeing eye dogs and all the things that are existing in the world that help people overcome disability or live with disability and of course um, 
animal rescue branches out into a lot of different areas and is really always fascinating and compelling to children. And this is just a great book where you can go in a lot of different directions. And I think one of the biggest points of the true Bobbies for me is that we will get through horrible times with the love of our friends and our family and staying close to the people we know are going to be there for us like Bobby and Bobcat did. And we know that this neighborhood was just almost totally destroyed and now it's back and there's families here and when bad things happen and it's nobody's fault, sometimes it's really hard to believe that it's going to come back and everyone's going to be okay, but that is what happened in the end. A lot of people did suffer and get hurt and we lost lives, but in the end New Orleans came back. And we know from the Bible story that there is always a rainbow after a storm and inside the storm clouds are silver linings.